Sisters and brothers, welcome to Holy Cross. My name is Pastor Brian, super glad that you could join us today. Uh, Today we have the beautiful opportunity to think about work and the gift that it is from God as we, of course, celebrate Labor Day this weekend. Uh, Friends, a couple of announcements, particularly for those of you who call this place home, a couple of announcements that we want you to know. Uh, First, you have the opportunity uh, to vote for new vestry members. Uh, The vestry board is the governing board of Holy Cross Lutheran Church, and there are three members who are exiting, and we need to vote three on. So you have that opportunity uh, delivered to you in that Friday email, and you'll have an opportunity to vote for some of those and send that back to us so that we can tell you who that new board will be. Uh, Number two, Daily Shepherd, uh, our partner in ministry, uh, particularly to preschoolers and their families, uh, are about to start their school year as well. Uh, But Molly, the director, wanted us to know that there are a couple of places in both the three and the four-year-old room. So church, if you know anybody who's looking for good preschool care, uh, good love with an incredible staff, can I encourage you to just share Daily Shepherd as uh, maybe a place where those people that you know uh, could uh, utilize? And then number three, uh, our 55 and over group are hosting a book club. Shirley Kelly's hosting that. A great opportunity just to to read through some uh, beautiful stories and then to to wrestle with them on how it is they influence and impact us. Friends, there's lots of other things that are happening. Make sure to check out the website or if you're connected with us on Facebook, make sure to get connected on HC Community where we have, uh, man, just all the details of everything uh, that's happening. Uh, Friends, want to just spend some time as we get into worship, getting our hearts and our minds right uh, as we settle into God's word today. So friends, will you pray with me? Oh God, from whom all good proceeds, grant to us, your servants, grant your holy inspiration that we may set our minds on things that are right. And by your guiding, by the outpouring of your spirit, we might accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. All God's people, we agree and we say, Amen. Yeah. 
precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he Friends, it is as we stand before the altar that we have the opportunity uh, to confess who we are so that we can be fully known and then fully loved. You see, our Father has called us to labor, and He's called us actually to labor in the Lord, yet far too often we labor for our own glory rather than for His. So, Let us confess our sin to God, our Heavenly Father, as we speak these words on screen together. Almighty God, we confess to you our sin. We long to be the ruler of our lives. We labor for our own glory. We work for our own praise. We are sorry for this. And we ask that you would have mercy And forgive us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you. And for his sake, forgives you all of your sin. It is the work of Christ which washes you clean. As a called servant of the word, and with the authority of Christ himself, know this. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. said at the beginning, we have the opportunity to, to think about, to meditate on labor, on work, and the gift uh, that it is from God. And so as we do that the, today, we do that in Psalm 147, uh, beginning at verse 1. Here's what the psalm writer writes. He says, praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise Him. See, so the Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding, it has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. And so sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. 
He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Extol the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. Thus far, God's word for us today. I bring to you this morning grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who have been and continue to be working on our behalf today. It's a Labor Day weekend, uh, so uh, potentially you're doing all the cool things of Labor Day weekend that have nothing to do with work, uh, like barbecuing and uh, going on boats and one last sip of summer kind of thing. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure uh, until I had to preach this sermon about Labor Day, I couldn't have actually told you what Labor Day was about, but now I can, and for those of you who don't yet know either, here you go. It's to celebrate the value and the dignity of work. At least that's what uh, one person had to say about Labor Day. It's a, a chance to rest from work, and then because of that, I imagine, take a closer look at it and appreciate it for what it is. So what do you think? What about work is worth celebrating? Maybe a harder question to uh, answer. Maybe a question that you answer regularly already anyway, as you uh, get home from uh, your work, if that's what you do, or come home from school and you get that question, sometimes dreaded, uh, sometimes looked forward to, but like, how was work? How was school? <laughs> Is there anything that you usually hear in that or find yourself saying in that that's worth celebrating? Sometimes, maybe. <laughs> but not always a question that's answered with things that we can celebrate. Well, as we think about your work at a job or at school or the work that you do at home, you might call it work or an assignment that we complete or a task that we accomplish, but it's all work and all requires effort or labor. So what the question here is, what's the value of it? What's the dignity in it? I imagine the originators of this holiday hope that we'd particularly celebrate the work of a paying job not related to the care of a home. Uh, but I think that the value and dignity uh, that we find in that work is largely similar to the things that we might do at school or in a home. Like, for example, we could celebrate the value of a good day's work. How it makes you feel like accomplished, like the stripes in the lawn when you're all done mowing. It just feels good. Uh, the, that you get to prove to yourself uh, yet again in another day, I still got it. I'm capable. I'm smart. I'm valuable to myself, to the team, to my family. I can find value in it uh, and that I get to use the gifts that God has given me in a way that's responsible. I get to be a good steward. Or maybe if I think about the dignity of being able to provide for myself or for my family, things that are needed, some of the things that are wanted, what satisfies me or us, the dignity of having a measure of being able to provide a measure of security for when life goes spinning out of control. <laughs> Depending on the work that you do, that, that could be maybe the money that's put in the bank for a rainy day. It could be the education that's going to be my safety net, even when this job or another job comes to an end. It could be even just meals in the freezer when we're in a pinch. Definitely some stuff worth celebrating. Stuff we can appreciate, that we value, things that we enjoy. <sighs> But for so many of us, those benefits, they have become more than that. They've become things we expect, that we depend on, that we, that we need. In a below the surface, beyond the actual task, and it's important to how I see myself kind of way for many of us, myself included, the work we do is how we know who we are. We find our value, our dignity in our work. How we do it, what we accomplish gives us our identity. 
And before you feel too bad about yourself, if you can put yourself in that category, this really isn't surprising. When you consider where we began and where we are now, go all the way back to the beginning of creation, back in the garden, Adam and Eve and God walking around. What's it look like? Adam and Eve are with God. They're in a close relationship with God, and he gives them work to do. Uh, be fruitful and multiply. Care for the garden. Rule over all these things. Take care of that. That's all pre-fall, pre-sin. But then after the fall, when they take things into their own hands, when they uh, decide what, how they will satisfy themselves, how they're going to be in control, they're going to say, this is who I really think that I am. I'm going to go after things this way. Well, then they find themselves separated from God in a broken relationship with God and still with work to do, but the work now God has cursed them. He said, by the sweat of your brow, by toil, you will do these things and that's how you're going to have to eat and live your days and dust you are and to dust you shall return. In the garden, in relationship with God, when things were perfect, they knew who they were. They had this sense of security. They were fully satisfied. But then moved out of the garden, sin coming in, they still long, we still long to know who we are. Still long for the security that was there. Still long to be satisfied the way we were there, the way they were there. <laughs> but all that's left is the work. So it's pretty logical that we would strive, that we would work to find that identity, that security, that satisfaction again. And the challenging part of all this, at least this is where it gets me messed up, is that through our work, we think we find it. Or at least we find a taste of it for long enough that we continue to chase after them there. It's sort of like when I play golf, like I just hit just enough good shots that I'm like, yeah, you know what? I should go do that again. And maybe I'll get a little bit better next time. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And we find ourselves continuing to conclude, you know what, if I just work a little bit harder, then I'll get those things that I long for in full, or at least more than what I've got now. So we keep at it. And this, my friends, this is a desperate pursuit. <clears throat> I actually wonder how often this is what fuels long hours at the office, late night homework sessions, or resistance to taking one day out of seven to rest at home. Work seems to offer what we long for. Let me tell you what I mean. It answers that question, who am I with? You are what you accomplish. Success shows you you're enough and that you're valuable, yet it's fickle because it's success in our eyes and that in the eyes of others and both tend to matter to us. And once it's achieved, it fades. <laughs> And you need a new thing, maybe even better success to be convinced that that is who you are again, that you are indeed valuable and successful. And, and success becomes, becomes something you can't live without, something you're dependent on. The fickleness of a teacher's grading and the kids' appraisals and the boss's whims are what decides who you think you are. <laughs> But work also sometimes uh, answers that longing for security with this. Hey, keep it up and you can be in control. Oh, we love being in control. Yes, I want that kind of security where I get to be in control. That's what Adam and Eve thought. I'm going to be in control. I'm going to call the shots here. Don't tell me what I shouldn't do. Um, I'm going to eat that fruit. Um, don't tell me what's off limits for me. I like being in control. I like it and I, I strive for and I find the control of putting enough money in the bank so that I can be at peace. <laughs> or maybe it's the work hard enough and you can control the grade that you get and therefore you get to be in control of the path of your future and you don't have to live in uncertainty about where this path will lead. Or read enough books or listen to enough podcasts, you who are doing the work of the home. And you can master raising your children at all ages and stages so that they never throw you for a loop that you're not ready for. And you can be certain that they'll always turn out the ways that you've hoped. Or maybe it provides 
the answer that you're longing for in terms of being satisfied. It it sounds kind of like this. Hey, once you buy those things and provide yourself that kind of comfort, then you'll be satisfied. (laughs) So we work harder. We comply with the lie that more is better. (laughs) And we so quickly forget how we thought that last time And we found that this time it still didn't satisfy and I still needed one more thing. But in this time we forget what we knew last time and have that same thought again. And not, well, if I'm honest with myself, honest with you, I think I keep telling myself in those moments, not that I've forgotten that I said that before, but this time it's going to be different. (laughs) I'm smarter now, more experienced now. I have a better idea what satisfies now. (laughs) And I know that what I've got is not doing it, so I might as well try. I don't see any other good options. And it's true, often in the moment we don't. We don't see any other good viable options for getting what we long for. So we keep working at it. (laughs) Wondering still if this might be you, here's a few things you might look at in your own life. This isn't exhaustive, but a few ideas. Your friends and family are making comments about seeing you less and you find yourselves tending to cancel plans that were made. Your work features prominently in your dreams. You feel too busy to justify taking a break from what you do. You work longer, but yet produce no, not much more. The work week ahead It scares you. When you have the opportunity for downtime, you continue to think about work. You check your email or Slack or whatever device obsessively. You can't even remember the last time you were totally off for an entire weekend, much less felt a day when you were rested. You're the last one in and the, or sorry, the first one in and the last one out, pushing margins all the time, squeezing every last moment for all that you can accomplish. Maybe you find yourself edgier and more irritable and you're not sure why. Or you've given up doing the hobby you enjoy because there's not enough time. You rarely find time for Bible reading or worship or prayer, but are habitually finding extra hours for work. Friends, these are potentially indicators that you don't just work. You need work because your identity or your security or your satisfaction depends on it. And a firm grip on each of these often looks to you just out of reach, potentially within reach. If I just work a little bit harder and you keep telling yourself that. God knew that what you long for will never be in your reach. And that's why he's never stopped working to reach you with the only thing that will provide himself and his work. (laughs) From the very moment of that fall into sin in Genesis Genesis chapter 3 in the garden, the moment that all human beings were separated from God's presence and had their relationship with him broken, It wasn't just man that then worked and pursued in all these ways that are foolish that we found ourselves in. God worked too, and he's never stopped working. The difference being that his work was effective. He set plans in motion so that his son would do the work of living the life that we couldn't live and doing the work that we can't do, acting based on the identity that he was given, son of God, trusting that his security was not going to be found in exerting his own power to control the situation or avoid what was uncomfortable, relying on God's providing to give him all that he'd need to be satisfied. God the Father saddled his son with the work of carrying our sins all our desperate striving through our own work and our blindness to his, all our trust in our own strength and our despising of his, all our misplaced satisfaction in the things of creation and in our unwillingness to allow 
what he provides as the creator to satisfy. <laughs> the work that Jesus did, it was toil and torture. It was nails and mind-numbing pain. It was loneliness and longing for the Father's mercy. He fully experienced the toil that we had and even worse. He died, bearing, enduring, working through the weight of our sins. And then he rose again, free from their burden. He completed the work. He lived perfectly out his identity, son of God, so that the father could reach us. With Jesus having worked to bear the burden of our sins, the separation from the broken relationship with God, it was all undone. Jesus restored to us to be with God and in a close relationship with him forever. The work is done. We no longer need to work as if it isn't. Your identity is secure. What you long for is provided by Jesus and his work. God sees you the way that he sees Jesus, his son. He says, you are my child, my son, my daughter, with whom I am well pleased. And because of that, you are secure, not because you are in control, but because he is. You are satisfied because you already have what this creation will never offer, a relationship with the creator who delights in and continues to work at giving you everything you need. It's good that we have a day to celebrate work. But let's celebrate work worth celebrating. God's good work, which turns us from looking to our work for only what his work can do, which gives us identity, a sense of safety, a sense of satisfaction. We then get to bring to the work that he made us to do so that we don't do it with desperation because our identity and well-being are on the line, but rather, instead of desperation, we do it with appreciation. That we already have what we need and that we get to be a part of God's ongoing work in this world we get to be a part of how his good work is seen in what we do, in what we produce. I uh, read a, a little while ago was uh, Psalm 147. He read all of it for you then. I just want to give you a few verses again. Helps us see that in what we do, what we produce, God is working through us because, you know, he's the one who, who covers this, the sky with clouds, supplies the earth with rain, makes the grass grow, certainly things he can do without us. But there are some of these things that are always through people. The, he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders. He satisfies you with the finest of wheat. Bars get strengthened by craftsmen. The finest of wheats are produced by farmers. Peace to borders comes by those who stand there. You get to be a part of the way that God delivers his goodness to the world and what you do, what you produce, but also in how you do that work. The way we work communicates his goodness as well. And clinging to this identity for me is instrumental in how I do the work that I do. See, when I, when I cling to the identity that God gives me, not the one that uh, work falsely promises to provide, then I don't have the stress of having something on the line besides the work that needs to be done, besides the people that will be served by that work, besides the God that is working to show himself to the world through it. What a beautiful thing it is to be a part of what God is doing. Now, will it be toil, hard, frustrating at times? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will, on this side of eternity. But with this identity in place, helping us feel secure, even then even when the frustration and the toil that we often express when we answer that question, how is work or how is school, it can be seen for what it is. The frustration and toil can be seen for what they are. 
reminders that God is still working, that he is not done yet, that he has more to give because this world won't and can't fully satisfy. So stop working like it might if you just worked harder. God has already worked hard enough. The day of completely certain identity, completely se- complete security, complete satisfaction, it will come. But in the meantime, God is still working and he wants to do it through you. So celebrate this Labor Day. Not just the value and dignity of work, but the value of God's work for you and that you have the dignity of being part of the work that he continues to do. Bringing more people to trust that his work is enough. Amen. Friends, having heard God's word today, let's profess our faith, faith in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, using words which have been passed down really through the centuries, the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's speak these together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we have the opportunity today to press into prayer, that that opportunity to talk to the Father who invites us back through the work of his Son. So I encourage you and invite you to join me now. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day once again for that incredible work of Jesus, a work uh, that is completed and effective, a work which writes our hearts and our minds, a work which allows then the work that we do to be an offering of praise, a sacrifice to you. And so, Father, we pray that you would use our hands, our mouths, our feet, our whole lives as we work joyfully and labor in your vineyard. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for all of those who in our midst today are mourning the loss of loved ones. Father, we understand that their hearts are heavy. They hurt. They feel the weight and the sting of death. And yet, Father, we know that death doesn't have a hold on those in faith that the resurrection is certain and true. So for those who mourn, I pray, Father, that you would comfort them with your presence and your peace and remind them of the hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus. Father, we continue to give thanks for those who serve to bring care particularly to the body and to the mind and to the soul. We pray, Lord, that you would use the skills, the wisdom, the knowledge. Father, all those things of doctors and of nurses, of therapists, Father, of pastors, that we could use those in your service as you bring about healing in others. Father, we pray this day that more and more people might know the good news of Jesus, that radical message of a forgiveness that is ours freely by God's grace, that more and more people would know the completed, effective work of Christ, that more and more people would experience your love, that they would know a Father who runs after them, who embraces them and kisses them and prepares a feast for them and puts the family robe on them. Father, we pray that more people might know the beauty and the love that you have for humanity. 
Father, it is the cry of our hearts that heaven would see more people that more and more might know this truth. So, Father, we pray that you would use your church to be bearers of the gospel, that you would use your sons and daughters, wherever they are, in whatever neighborhood, whatever pocket, whatever place they play and work, Lord, I pray that you would use those opportunities to enrich the kingdom. And Father, as schools have started, as families try to get into a rhythm, we pray, again, just for, ah, oh man, dynamics in homes. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to give strength and endurance to kids and to teenagers, to parents. Father, as they just have to endure these days. Father, we ask that you would work in all things and that you would give us your spirit so that we would have the eyes and the ears to see and to hear that work. And so, Father, for these prayers and the, gosh, the numerous prayers that are on our hearts, we are thankful that you hear them before we speak them. We gather all of these prayers today in that prayer which Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Well, friends, it is indeed good to worship with you today, to hear about that beautiful gift Mm. of work and to give that back to the Lord. Uh, Our prayer is that your celebration of Labor Day is a good one (laughs) and a safe one. Mm. And so friends, as you go, go with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.